Hey guys, it's Layla. Today we'll speak about pH imbalances, acidosis, and alkalosis. The normal pH in our blood is 7.35 to 7.45. So if the pH decreases below this level, it's going to be acidosis, and if it goes above this level, it's going to be alkalosis. Now, acidosis can be a result of two things either an increase in the carbon dioxide levels in the body or a decrease in the hydrogen carbonate levels. Alkalosis, on the other hand, can be due to a decrease in the level of the carbon dioxide levels or an increase in the level of the hydrogen carbonate ions. Now, the body has several mechanisms through which it can control this pH change, so it has several buffer systems. If these work well, it is the going to be the compensated stage where the pH is going to be normal. But if these mechanisms fail, then we're going to go into the uncompensated or decompensated phase. We have two types. So you have a metabolic and so you have a metabolic and a respiratory. If there are changes in the bicarbonate levels, then it is going to be a metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. And if there are changes in the carbon dioxide levels, then it's going to be respiratory acidosis or respiratory alkalosis. Now let's have a look in each condition. So when you have respiratory acidosis, the pH is going to be below the normal value. The carbon dioxide levels are going to be high because we said it's respiratory, right? The HCO3 is going to be normal. When you have respiratory alkalosis, the pH is going to be higher than normal, carbon dioxide levels are going to be low, and bicarbonate is normal again. Moving on to metabolic, the carbon dioxide will be normal, but the bicarbonate will change. So metabolic acidosis, pH is lower than normal, bicarbonate is low. In metabolic alkalosis, the pH is higher than normal, and the bicarbonate levels are also high. Okay, let's start with the metabolic conditions. We will start with metabolic acidosis. So what are the causes? Remember, too much acid and too little bicarbonate. When you have increased acidic production, for example, in diabetic ketoacidosis, when you have hypermetabolism, you can have lactic acidosis. When you have reduced acid elimination, for example, in renal failure, when you have reduced hydrogen carbonate production, which is in dehydration or in liver failure, increased hydrogen carbonate elimination, which is in diarrhea or fistulas. Moving on to the clinical features, if you watch wrestling, you'll know Triple H. Okay, usually in metabolic conditions, you'll end up with nausea and vomiting. And the blood pressure depends on the condition. So in this case, it's going to reduce. What you need to remember with the Triple H is headache, hyperkalemia, and compensatory hyperventilation, which leads to cusmal breathing or cusmal respirations. You will also notice warm, flushed skin due to vasodilation and reduced reflexes and muscle tone. It is the opposite with metabolic alkalosis. You're going to have too much bicarbonate and too little acid. So the causes, severe vomiting, which is acid, acid elimination, excessive gastrointestinal suctioning, diuretics, and excessive sodium hydrogen carbonate intake. Also have triple H here, but it stands for different things. But again, starting with the metabolic changes, which is nausea, vomiting, in this case also diarrhea, then the triple H, it stands for compensatory hyperventilation, hypokalemia, and haziness, so which can be related to the confusion. Reduced loss of consciousness, the person is dizzy, the person is irritable, also tachycardia and neurological symptoms like tremors, muscle cramps, tingling, etc. Now moving on to respiratory conditions, so starting with acidosis, it is because of the retention of carbon dioxide by the lungs. So what are the causes? Anything that basically leads to hyperventilation, for example, reduced respiratory stimuli such as anesthesia or drug overdose, COPD, pneumonia, even atelectasis, etc. 
You can apply Triple H here as well with headache, hyperkalemia and hyperreflexia. Here the cause is hyperventilation which is why it is not the clinical feature. Here you also have rapid shallow respirations, you have reduced blood pressure just like metabolic acidosis, you have dyspnea because it is respiratory acidosis. Because of hyperventilation obviously you're going to get hypoxia. Because of the hyperkalemia you're going to have dysrhythmias as well patient is going to be confused, the patient is going to be dizzy, etc. For respiratory alkalosis, it is because the lungs are losing too much carbon dioxide. This is mainly due to hyperventilation as opposed to respiratory acidosis, which was due to hyperventilation. So the causes of hyper could be anxiety, could be pulmonary embolism, could be a fear, uh, also due to mechanical ventilation. For clinical features, Triple H again, so we can have hypokalemia and haziness like we did for metabolic alkalosis. But here we also have hyperventilation as a clinical feature because the patient is still hyperventilating. So it is not only the cause but also a clinical feature. The patient can have seizures, nausea, vomiting, um, reduced or normal blood pressure, again neurological features and uh, tachycardia as metabolic alkalosis. For diagnosis, you can check the arterial blood gases, so pH 7.35 to 7.45. Bicarbonate levels are between 22 to 26. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide should be between 35 to 45 and the partial pressure of oxygen which is between 80 to 100. You can also check oxygen saturation which should be 95 to 100 percent. For acidosis, you usually administer either bicarbonate supplements or sodium citrate and you have to try to treat the cause. You can also give oxygen or IV fluids, etc. For alkalosis, you have to replace the water and electrolytes and treat the cause. Rarely you uh, can administer dilute acids, otherwise you just try to treat the cause. Okay guys, that is it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.